Are you interested in learning more about our Uniview fixed lens bullet, turret, or vandal dome? Well, you've come to the right place because here is everything you need to know about these cameras all in one place. Hey guys, it's Tyler from Nelly Security and today we are taking a deep dive into our Uniview fixed lens cameras. Now Uniview is our newest product line here at Nelly Security and there is a lot to love. There are some incredible cameras with crazy features that really brings a lot of innovation to the table. But if you're just looking for a simple standard fixed lens camera, Uniview has you covered there too. In fact, this line just might become your new go-to brand when you're looking for a new fixed lens security camera. So today we are going to take an in-depth look at these cameras. We'll tell you everything you need to know in order to make an informed decision about whether or not these products are for you. We'll start with a quick overview of these cameras, followed by a full unboxing. We'll install all three cameras on our back parking lot, set them up on our network, and take a tour of the interface. Finally, we'll add these to a Uniview NVR and set up and search for some intelligent events. So as you can see, we have a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and jump right into this review. Introducing Uniview's fixed lens cameras, the Vandal Dome, Bullet, and Turret. All three cameras come in full HD 1080p and four megapixels while the bullet and turret cameras also come in 4K Ultra HD. These cameras are durable and powerful enough to suit large enterprise and corporate applications, but their aesthetics, ease of installation, and competitive pricing make them ideal for any small business or residential installation. Enjoy beautiful imagery with these cameras 24-7, 365. With its IP67 weaterproof rating, its 98-foot infrared distance, and its true WDR, these cameras are ready to give you incredible performance no matter what comes your way. All right, now let's move on to our product unboxing. Here we have three of our fixed lens Uniview cameras. We have our two megapixel bullet, our four megapixel Vandal Dome, and our eight megapixel 4K turret. All right, I got our boxes here, so let's go ahead and take a look. Now, if you're familiar with our H-series or R-series cameras, there's not really gonna be a whole lot of difference here in terms of what comes in the box. We do have our quick start guide. We also have a waterproof requirements document that just helps you make sure your cameras are good to go in terms of uh, waterproof. These cameras are IP67 weatherproof, but you still have to weatherproof the connections and such, which is why it does come with a weatherproof grommet. We have our mounting hardware here, and we have the mounting template, which these might look a little bit different than what you're used to. Also in the Vandal Dome box, uh, it does come with the hex wrench for removing the dome. Now the other boxes do come with pretty much the same things inside. Here's that mounting template for the bullet. And there's the drill template for your turret. And again, both the bullets and turrets come with the quick start guide and the waterproof guide, the waterproof grommet, your mounting hardware, and that's about it. All that's left now is to look at the cameras themselves. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We will go ahead and start with the bullet camera here. As you can see, this is a beautiful camera. Uh, it's nice and compact. Um, it feels very solid. It's got a very nice uh, all metal construction. This bullet does look identical in the two megapixel version, which is what this is, and with the uh, four megapixel version, but the 4K version actually looks a little bit different. So this is what the 4K bullet looks like compared to the two megapixel and four megapixel bullet. Let's talk real quick about this fixed lens here. Since this is the two megapixel model, this is a four millimeter fixed lens. Uh, the 4K version also has a 4mm fixed lens. The 4 megapixel version, on the other hand, has a 3.6mm lens. So the 4 megapixel version is slightly more zoomed out. It has a slightly wider angle than the other two. Other than those couple of differences, these three cameras are basically the same. It's got this really nice three axis adjustment, uh, and it's all controlled by this one knob. So all I have to do is loosen this knob a little bit, 
and we can move the camera up and down. We can rotate it this way. We can turn it this way. So this is a really nice feature of this bullet camera. The axis movement is really nice and fluid. So it's super simple to adjust with no tools necessary. And that could be a pro or a con, depending on how accessible your camera is. The exception to this is the 4K model, which has individual screws controlling each axis. And now we can take a look at this pigtail. Uh, it just has these two connections for your Cat5 Ethernet connection, as well as your 12 volt DC connection. Next, let's take a look at our Vandal Dome. And here's the camera, compact, beautiful, this thing's super tough, IK10 vandal proof, so it's basically indestructible. Whether you're getting the two megapixel or the four megapixel, this vandal dome is going to look identical. Also, both versions of this vandal dome do come in a 2.8 millimeter lens. So your vandal dome is going to have a much wider field of view than your bullet. So to get under the dome, we do have these two hex screws here. We do have the security screw here to hold the dome in place. And here we have the camera under the dome. Once it's installed, you can make pretty simple angle adjustments either up and down, just by grabbing the lens and pulling it. You can also rotate the lens if you need to. Now let's take a look at the pigtail here. It does have an ad additional connections. Um, so you see your Cat5 ethernet connection and your 12 volt DC connection, just like the bullet camera. But we do also have alarm in and out and audio in and out connections if you need to connect an alarm or a microphone to this camera. So that's a really nice feature with our Vandal Dome fixed lens cameras that you won't find on your bullet or your turret. So if you know you're gonna be needing a microphone or an alarm with your camera, go ahead and get the Vandal Dome. And last but not least, we have the turret. Again, just a very nice camera, uh, well-built, solid construction. The camera itself is all metal. However, this cover over the top is plastic. This camera looks the same whether you're getting two megapixel, four megapixel, or eight megapixel. Like the Vandal Dome, this turret's fixed lens is 2.8 millimeters across the board. So that's full HD 1080p, four megapixel, or 4K Ultra HD. It's all going to be that nice wide 2.8 millimeter lens. So to open this and take the cover off, you just need to turn it counterclockwise. There we go. And it just slides right over the camera like this. Underneath here, you can see the three screws, which is how you install your turret camera. We also have a tension screw on the side here. So we can just go ahead and loosen up this tension screw a bit. It frees that camera up and we can easily move it and angle the turret however we need to. And again, just like the bullet, this turret only has a, a an ethernet connection and your 12 volt DC connection. All right, we're here at our back parking lot at Nelly Security and I'm ready to install these cameras. Installation is super easy. The first thing I'm going to do is take these mounting templates and I'm going to place them on the ceiling where I'm going to be installing each of these cameras. Next, I'll go ahead and drill my holes into the ceiling and now we're ready for installation. All right, first I'm gonna install this bullet camera. And again, these are very easy cameras to install. We can either run the cables up through the ceiling like this, or we can run the cables out the side of the camera like this. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and install it like this, running out the side of the camera. First thing I'm gonna do is loosen up this knob, which gives us access to these three axes uh, for angle adjustments on this camera. And that just makes it a lot easier to install because we can move it around and we can get our screwdriver in there right where we need it. Now, once we have it screwed into the ceiling, we can go ahead and adjust that angle however we need to and then tighten this knob back up. And now we're good to go. All right, now next up we have our Vandal Dome. And in order to install this, we just need to take off this glass Vandal Proof cover using the included hex wrench. Now, once this cover is removed, all we need is two screws to secure this camera in place. We will go ahead and angle that lens and reattach this dome. And finally, we have our turret camera here. Uh, in order to screw this into the ceiling, we just need to remove this plastic cover. We will do so by turning this counterclockwise and then it just slides right off the camera like so. Once we have this camera installed in the ceiling, we will loosen this tension screw just a bit. That will give us the ability to angle this lens however we need to. Once we have it angled, we'll tighten that back up and replace the cover.
Now our cameras are installed, they're almost good to go, but there is one more step that we have to do, at least for the bullet and the vandal dome. Since we ran the cables out the sides of these cameras, the Cat5 Ethernet connections are exposed to the elements. And even though these cameras are IP67 weatherproof, we still need to make sure that we're weatherproofing these connections. For that, these cameras do come with a weatherproofing grommet, so we're gonna go ahead and install that right now. Now we have our cameras installed and weatherproofed, let's head back inside and set these up on our network. Now this can be done in three different ways and we're gonna show you all three of those ways today. First, you can plug your camera into the PoE switch in the back of an NVR. Second, you can plug your camera into a separate PoE switch. Or third, you can plug your camera into a standard non-PoE switch or router. First, let's talk about the recorder. Now, the fastest way to get up and running with your new camera is to plug it into the PoE switch in the back of a Uniview NVR. Once you connect your camera to the NVR via an ethernet cable, you'll get instant plug and play video to your monitor after the camera boots up. No configuration, no logging in, just simple and instant plug and play video. However, you don't need an NVR in order to get these cameras set up. You can set it up as a standalone camera by plugging it into a switch or your router. First, let's talk about PoE switches. Power over Ethernet is a very simple and fast way to get your cameras set up on the network. With power over Ethernet, your one Ethernet cable can carry both power and data to and from your security camera. If you don't have an NVR or a PoE switch, you can plug your camera directly into a standard non-PoE switch or internet router. However, if you decide to take this route, you will need to run a 12 volt DC power cable to your security camera. However, if you don't have a PoE switch, and especially if this is your only camera, I highly recommend picking up one of these simple PoE switches from our website. They're only about 10 bucks and they are totally worth it for only having to run one cable to your camera. As you can see, it's super easy to get these Uniview fixed lens cameras installed, set up, and ready to go. Now it's time to hop onto the web and NVR interface to see what these cameras can do. First, we're going to log into our camera's interface via the web browser. Now this is just the camera itself plugged into a PoE switch. So if you don't have an NVR, if you're going to be using this camera as a standalone camera, this is exactly what you'll see. So the first thing we'll wanna do is open up Easy Tools here. Easy Tools is Uniview's configuration tool, which is going to let us view and modify the IP address of our Uniview products. So as you can see, this actually pulls in data from our H-series cameras as well. But what we're gonna be looking for is that Uniview model number, which is this one down here at the very bottom. Now that is our 4K fixed lens turret camera. And that's the one we're gonna be looking at today. But keep in mind, this interface is going to be the same uh, across the board, no matter which camera you have. So I'm gonna take this IP address and I'm going to plug that into my web browser. And now we're going to log in. The default username is admin and our default password is 123456. And now when we very first log in, it's going to prompt us to change our password. Uh, we're gonna keep it as 123456 for now. So I'll just turn that off. And we can see here, this is our live view, the main view that we see once we log into the camera's interface. From the live view, we have a couple of buttons down here at the bottom. We have our full screen button. We have a digital zoom. We also have our recording button. This will allow us to take a recording. And here we have our screenshot button, which will take a screenshot. When we move the mouse around the image, we see this uh, overlay down in the bottom right hand corner with some helpful information that tells us our frame rates, our bit rate, uh, our codec that we're currently recording in, the resolution that it's currently recording. We do have the option to click this pin button here, which will leave that overlay up all the time if we want it to. We have our proportional buttons here. We can stretch it to fit the screen. We can scale it to fit the screen so that uh, the proportions are kept or just keep the original proportions here, which because it's 4K, you know, it's going to be very large. So we're going to go ahead and keep it at scale. Next to that, we have our mainstream, substream, and third stream buttons if we need to change the resolution. Once we hit that substream, you can see that now we are at 720 by 576. And if we hit the third stream, it's just getting really ugly. Now we are at 352 by 288. Um, so we're definitely gonna keep that in the mainstream. 
And again, we'll see later how we can change these substreams and third streams. Uh, maybe we want the substream to be 1080p instead of 4K. We can manually set that. And now the last thing I want to show you here on this live view is this image button. This is essentially just a shortcut button. If you click this button, it's going to take you directly to the image settings in the setup menu. So it's a nice feature to have that there. Just really quick access to these image settings here. And that's about it for this live view screen. It's pretty simplified and minimalistic. There's not a whole lot here. So let's go ahead and move on to the setup menu. One unique feature about these cameras is that they are very customizable. So if you're kind of a tinkerer, if you like to play around with your camera settings, there is a lot for you to dive into here, but most of it is beyond the scope of this video. So just know that there is a lot for you to explore apart from what you see in the next few minutes. So let's check out this menu system. You know, there are going to be certain menus that you access more commonly than other menus. And here, Uniview has put all of those most common settings in this common section. So if there's something that you want to accomplish pretty quickly, and it's something that you use often, it's most likely going to be here in this common menu or over here in common configuration. We have our basic info, and then we have our local parameters, which is going to be the machine that you are currently using to access the interface. We have our intelligent mark, which we can set to disabled or enabled. I'm going to leave that enabled because that's going to allow us to see our smart event markers later on when we set up some smart events such as line crossing, intrusion, etc. Down here we also have our recording and snapshot settings, and this is where we can set the file location to save our recordings and our images. Next we have our network settings, which we can make this DHCP or static. I'm going to go ahead and make this a static IP address and leave it at 45 so we don't get kicked off. So next up we have our time settings and you can see that the current time on this camera is 426 PM, uh, but the time of this recording is 1126 PM. So I could set this as central time, which is where we are currently, or I can just make this easy and click sync with computer time. We do have our server settings here and our on-screen display settings. This is a pretty unique OSD because we can pretty much customize everything about it. We can move them around on the screen. We can decide what we want displayed on the screen. We can even add in a, uh, a custom field if we want to say something like, I don't know, Nelly's security. We can move area two down here. Let's say we want the camera's name. We can say back parking lot. We'll move that down here to this corner. We can also add a scroll. So if we want to say something like, this is a video demonstrating the features on the Uniview fixed lens cameras. And then down here, maybe underneath areas two and one. We can also have just the date, just the time. We can upload a picture to display over a part of the screen. And we can also have people counting show up on the OSD, which we will get more into that later when we look at the smart events available on these cameras. So now if I go back to the live view, we can easily see all those changes that I just made. If you want to get really customizable, you can change the font size and the font color, and you can change how these text looks. You can make it have a background. You can make it stroked. However you want that to look, you have complete control over this OSD. The next menu here is user management, where you can add and manage your users. Pretty straightforward. Let's jump into the network section. This is all stuff that you can explore on your own as we're not going to get too in depth in this video. Um, I will point out easy cloud. This is where you will get mobile access on your phone using the Uniview application easy view. Now this app is available for both Android and iPhone. Be sure to toggle the easy cloud setting to on. Once you do that, take out your mobile phone, click add, scan, and scan the QR code. Simply add a descriptive name for your camera. This can be anything you want it to be. And then click start live view. So let's go ahead and jump into the video section here. Now here on video, we have all of our video settings available to us on each of our streams. So we can change this video compression, for instance, to H265. We can change our frame rate if we need to bitrate, image quality. 
all these different video settings. We can also do this for the sub and the third streams. So for instance, we may only need a mainstream and a substream. We can just turn off that third stream altogether. Now for our substream, I don't want this to be D1. I want this to be 1080p. So we can set that. We'll keep the, the video compression for the substream at 264. Frame rate at 1080p actually goes down to 15 frames per second, which is fine. This is just our substream. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna hit save. And now let's jump into the image settings. You can see we can adjust the brightness and saturation of the image, fine tune the contrast and the sharpness, really play around with this to make sure that we're getting a nice clean image that we're happy with. Under exposure, you can see that these cameras do have true WDR. We can turn that on and mess around with the level. So if you do have some areas of your image that vary in brightness from very dark to very bright, you might want to turn on this WDR setting and play around with it a bit. We do have a privacy mask. If there's an area on the image that we don't necessarily want to be visible all the time, uh, we can just mask over it here. Now here is our intelligent menu, and we'll come back to this here in a bit. Let's move on to events. And this is going to be our not smart events, uh, essentially motion detection, which we can draw an area here either the whole screen or a portion of the screen. We can also change the detection mode to grid, which gives us this familiar red grid that we may be more used to. And we can deselect and select areas as needed. Now we do have a storage menu. There is no edge storage on this camera. So there's no slot for a micro SD card and no way for you to record locally to the camera. However, if you still want to save video and images automatically, you can do that through setting this up with a NAS or through FTP. You can see that we have the option of setting this up with a NAS or a network attached storage to save video footage directly from this camera, triggered by, say, a, a line crossing detection or just basic motion detection. This is going to be the only way to do that. However, in the FTP menu, we can set this up using a local server on our computer if we just want to save image snapshots from those smart or basic events. Next up, we have our security tab, all stuff that we're not going to get into here. And we have our maintenance tab where we can upgrade our camera's firmware. We can restore our camera to default. We can import or export our camera's settings. And if we're just having some trouble with our camera, we can come here to restart the device. So I do have this 16 channel Uniview NVR set up behind me. It's powered up and connected to our network and it's ready to go. The fastest way to get up and running with your new Uniview cameras is to plug your camera directly into the PoE switch in the back of the NVR. However, our camera is currently plugged into a separate PoE switch, so we are going to have to do a bit of additional configuration. All right, so let's go ahead and log into this menu here. And the first page we come to is this list of cameras. I'm going to click on cam configure and as you can see we have this list of uh, discovered cameras over here to the side and at the very bottom of the list here is our 4k turret so we're going to select that and click ok and now when we go back to the live screen you can see very quickly we have set that turret up on our nvr so we'll go ahead and take a quick tour of this menu. It's really not that different from the web interface. You'll see obviously there are a few more features on the NVR menu system, but not all of those features apply directly to our fixed lens cameras. So first we have our camera menu with uh, obviously our list of cameras as well as our OSD controls and our image settings, privacy mask, all the same settings that we had available to us on our web interface. We click on VCA, this is going to be our intelligent events. And we have two options here. We have VCA configure and VCA search. We'll come back to this in just a minute. Before we do that, there's one more thing I need to do and that is in storage. I do have a hard drive installed in this NVR. So I'm just going to need to format that before we move forward. And now we are ready to go. I'm going to come to my VCA menu. And again, this is where all of our smart events live. And we're going to set up a few of these and see how they work. Let's start with a simple one such as cross line detection. Now, this is exactly how it sounds. Anytime a line is crossed, it can be either in one direction or both directions. The alarm will trigger. So let's go ahead and enable this and draw a line. 
I'm just going to click once over here, draw a line across the parking lot there. And now you can see this line is going both ways based on the A and B. I can change the direction if I want to only capture movement walking away from the building or only capture movement walking toward the building. And for now, I'm just going to leave this as both directions. We can adjust the sensitivity if we need to. Uh, that's something you're just gonna have to play around with and test. So let's edit our trigger actions. Uh, what I want it to do is record just this one channel. Uh, what's cool here is if you did have multiple channels connected to this NVR, you could trigger a recording on multiple cameras based off of a smart event on one camera. For now, we're just going to leave this as record channel D1. So let's apply, click OK. Arming schedule, if you only want this alarm to go off during a certain time of day, you can select that. Depending on the day of the week, you can have this set up differently for holidays, which is really cool. Um, but we want this to be just left on all the time. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. And now let's go outside and trigger that alarm. All right, we are gonna go outside and cross this line. Again, I have this set up on my computer so that you can see the lines as I cross them and we can see exactly how the camera is tracking me as I go. And that little tail will follow me uh, wherever I go, tracking the position of whoever or whatever just crossed that line. And now we can go find that clip in our playback menu here. If I click on just Nelly Security up here, you can see that we do have this timeline down here in the bottom. Let's zoom in a little bit and show one hour at a time and we can see the difference between normal recording, which is the blue, and event recording, which is the red. A quick and easy way that you can filter this, though, is to click on Video Retrieval. Here you can specifically say what it is that you're looking for. What we're looking for is VCA. And we can even say exactly what we're looking for, and that is across line detection. Then I'm going to click my camera. We can set time constraints if we need to, and hit Search. And here we go, we do have one line crossing recorded, and I can go ahead and hit this play button. But before that, keep in mind down here, you can determine how much time you want to play before and after. I don't really want to see a whole lot of what happened before I cross that line, so I will just select five seconds and hit play. And there I am, crossing that line. There is one more way that we can do this, and that is from the menu, VCA. Instead of clicking VCA config, we can click VCA search. There are three things we can search for, face, behavior, or counting. Since we did a line crossing detection, let's go to behavior, and we'll select our camera, set a start time and an end time if we need to, and we'll set the type to cross line detection, and click search. And it says here we have a cross line detection where my whole body crossed that line. And here it actually picked that up twice because it thought my shadow was something else. So that's one instance when I may need to play with the sensitivity a little bit just so that it's not picking up every time a shadow crosses that line. All right, let's go back and set up another smart event. But now I want to focus on face detection and people counting. These are two really cool features that I want to show you how this works. So I'm going to enable people counting and hit apply. Now what this is going to do is disable the line crossing that I set up from earlier because when you have people counting enabled, that's the only smart event that you can have enabled at a time. So we'll click OK. We can enable shoulder de demarcation. Uh, what this would do is if you're going to have multiple people walk crossing the line at the same time, it's going to be able to differentiate people based on uh, their shoulders. So what I can do is move this shoulder demarcation uh, to roughly the size of human shoulders. And in this scenario, it would probably be about that size. We can change the direction of this arrow from A to B or B to A. And what this is gonna do is just let the program know which direction is entry and which direction is exit. Uh, the people counting feature will keep track of both entry and exit, it just needs to know which way is which. I'm going to hit apply. Something else cool that you can do is in your OSD settings, under camera and OSD, we can add a count people section. And I'm gonna move this over here and hit apply. Now if we go back to our live view, 
we can see how many people have entered and exited uh, based on the people counting number. So I'm gonna go out there and walk across the line a couple of times. I have a feeling that we are going to need to mess with the sensitivity quite a bit to get this dialed in. But let's go check it out and see what we can do. As you can see, as I cross this line heading this way, the exit number just went up one. And as I turn around and come back towards the building, we're going to get one more number added to the entry number. All right, I'm back here at the NVR. <laughs> Looking at this, it looks like we are going to have to adjust the sensitivity just a bit, uh, simply because it counted two exits instead of one, and then one entry. What I'm assuming happened is my shadow crossed that line and it thought there were two of us. What I can do is bring down this sensitivity a bit to maybe 40 or 35. Uh, another thing I could do again is enable this shoulder demarcation and we'll see how that works. You can set up people counting from the web interface using the camera alone. All that you'll be able to do is display the people counting statistics on the OSD. From the NVR, there's a lot more that you can do with those statistics and I'm gonna show you that now. Under VCA search, we're going to click on counting. We're going to select a camera and we can find out how many people have entered, how many people have left, and the total. And what we can do is get a daily report, a weekly report, a monthly report, or even a yearly report of how many people have entered and exited our location. We can count and we can see a total of two people have entered our location. It says two, that's because I tested this out a little bit before I went out and did it myself and then I reset the count on the OSD. However, resetting the count on the OSD does not reset the total number of people entered in this statistics database. So it's telling me that two people have entered. I can change this to weekly and it's still gonna tell me on Tuesday, two people entered. I can change this to monthly or I can even do this yearly and it's gonna tell me two people entered in March. I can do this how many people left and it's gonna tell me three people left. Uh, again, one time it counted my shadow, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, and I can do total, which is going to tell me uh, both people entered, which is yellow, and people left, which is green. There are lots of companies right now using Uniview for this very purpose, because this is such a, uh, an, an innovative way to keep track of who's coming in and exiting your business. Whether you're a security professional looking for a new product to offer your clients, a security enthusiast always in the market for new video surveillance equipment, or a complete beginner to the world of CCTV, Uniview has something for you. If you want to learn more about our Uniview fixed lens bullet, turret, or vandal dome, click the links below to check out our blog post. Not only do we have a full review of these products, but we also have additional videos and links to each of the products. If you are a security dealer or installer wondering what Uniview can do for you and your business, we have another blog post geared specifically for you, so I will link that down in the description as well. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us across all social media for more security content just like this. If you want to see more videos about this fixed lens camera, click this playlist right here. Or, if you want to see what we're working on now, click here to see our most recent video. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Uniview. Better security, better world.